subscribe to Makbul reaction welcome to our youtube channel friends aaj hum video dekhne wale hain why does not, not india, india on sri lanka ye ek question hai question jo hamare liye bahut mayne khez hai ki dekhte hain ki sri lanka ki history kya hai aur india ka hissa sri lanka banne ja raha hai aur kyun nahi bana se nahi bana aur sri lanka ek alag riyasat kaise qaim hui bahut informative video hai to hame chahiye is video mein aapka saath so let's start So the Republic of India doesn't shy away from claiming territory. It has 36 different subdivisions that cover well over mm. a million square miles of land, and if it had its way, it would have even more from Pakistan and China. Yet off its southern coast lies an island with a plethora of historical and cultural ties to the Indian mainland, but that the Republic doesn't own or even claim. which begs the question why did that island become an independent self so all the time it's not an indian state why is it that india doesn't own sri lanka khud mukhtar matlab independent mulk kyun bana ye india ke sath kyun nahi gaya kyunki us waqt mauka tha na no both india and sri lanka is india company se alag ho gaya empire which called sri lanka ceylon As with India though the British weren't the only Europeans in British Sri Lanka ko Ceylon kehte the Portuguese and then later the Dutch gained concessions from native Sri Lanka 1687 mein acha of which there are two main Dutch types of Sri Lankans the majority Buddhist Sinhalese and the minority Hindu Tamils who live mostly in the north of the country matlab Buddhism pura tha na ilaka Hindu Tamil bahut kam the So before British rule began Or, uh, in the early 1790s the uh, Sri Lankan coast was controlled by the Tamil Raj se aane se pehle ha ye Andy ruled the mountainous interior Sri Lanka par control tha this was a chaotic time and the Dutch soon found themselves subservient to revolutionary France which was oh. fighting Britain which now had a reason to be interested in Sri Lanka They drove out the Dutch and established the colony of British Ceylon in 1796. Oh, Sinhali Bhasha ko nikal denge na unhone. Critical. At the end of the 18th century, Jis tarah Amar Bahadur Shah Zafar was under British control. However, it wasn't the British government, the crown, that wielded power on the ground. Rather, it was a publicly traded business, the British East India Company. the new colony of ceylon on the other hand ab ye british dusri colony bhi thi asia mein by 1817 british ceylon covered all of sri lanka britain had fought three wars against kandy the first of which ended in stalemate jang mein lad gaya aur ruin aur nakami hui ke baad aati par khatam ho gaya khun ba lekin uske baad aake kand deposed by the british and many of his bachcha ko mazool kar diya na unhone nikal diya king was a tamil while most of the aristocracy was sinhalese Finally the third war saw Britain defeat the very chiefs who had aided them they were upset that Britain Aakhir kar Britannia ka kabza ho gaya over their island In contrast to India which Abhi ye pura British kabze mein chala gaya was largely ruled by Indians themselves albeit the EIC generally appointed Muslim governors to rule a primarily Hindu population Sri Lanka was administered by and for Brits British law was imposed on the island and after a decade or two of relative religious toleration Britain also began to attempt to enforce anglicanism on the Sri Lankans. The company did have some power there though notably they controlled the cinnamon trade. However unlike on the mainland they were not in the business of governing. Although to be honest they weren't really in that business in India either at least not effectively. The EIC was really in the business of well doing business not stable governance which caused some rather pressing issues that culminated in the 1857 sepoy mm. mutiny mm. yaar bade zulm se indian mercenaries hired no? by the east Bilkul. india company mm. obviously mm. that was cheaper than shipping in armies from europe and actually the crown hired sepoys in sri lanka as well Why did the Indian sepoys rebel? Well, they were generally treated poorly by the company, but the final straw was the issuing to them of firearms that were greased. Isliye ko jaari karna tha jo ki suar ke matlab ye to phir wahan unhone na pasand karna tha na ha jisse mukhtalif tartib muslim aur insani sipahiyon ki jazbati aur mazhabi jahan is pakistan india mein bhi aisa hua tha bagawat sabit hui na and created 1858 mein control samajh liya bartanvi raj qaim hua number of semi autonomous indian princedoms 
Britain's Queen Victoria would later be styled Empress of India, and the Raj would grow to include all of modern Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. So why then, given that both British Ceylon and the British Raj were under one state's control and their relative geographic proximity, well, Ceylon wasn't alone in being a separate British territory near the Raj. Both Nepal and Bhutan were also never a part of British India. But they maintain some semblance of independence because it simply wasn't worth the effort to fully conquer them. Ceylon, though, was already fully controlled by the UK, and the reason it wasn't incorporated into the Raj was that the British civil servants who ran India had no interest in the island. Sri Lanka was then a cash crop economy, but that made it so the food supply on the island was not great, which led to famine among the majority Sinhalese, while the Tamils were more privileged and were all the government. And that, in combination with the government's continued attempts to squash Buddhism in favor of Christianity, led to revolts in 1848. That revolt wasn't did mostly lay off on the proselytizing, but they certainly didn't leave Sri Lanka. It was very clear, though, that the Sinhalese were not going to be passive subjects, and that, along with British Ceylon's economic instability, made its annexation an unattractive prospect for the Raj. So British India and Ceylon stayed separate for the remaining 90 years of British rule on the subcontinent, but Britain was eventually made to leave with India and Ceylon, and still the British were not going to be there. But that was not the case, it was not the case, it was not the case. In 1948, the British was in the Dominion of Ceylon. Much like, say, Canada or Australia, Britain's monarch remained their ceremonial head of state, but in practice the country was sovereign. Like in India, independence was achieved almost exclusively through non-violent protest, but unlike Sri Lanka, the former British Raj was not a peaceful place immediately following Britain's exit. The partitioning of the Raj into the countries India and India, Pakistan, Pakistan was a messy, bloody affair. The parts of it ruled by Indian princes were free to choose which of the new nations they would join. Though complicating that, some, notably Kashmir and Hyderabad, tried to make a well for them. The chaos of partition and the Indo-Pakistani War of 1947-48 left hundreds of thousands dead and millions displaced. In short, joining up with India then would have looked to Sri Lankans like a terrible idea. It was also the case that despite the best efforts of India's founding father, Mahatma Gandhi, India, while officially secular, was going to be a part of the Sinhalese remained by far the largest community in Sri Lanka. The other notable group did have fellows in India, but being a minority, whether or not the Tamils wished for unification was irrelevant. In 1972, the Union of Ceylon shrugged off its last colonial vestige by becoming a republic and renaming itself to Sri Lanka. As for why, ultimately, it has never become a part of India, well, because, as it turns out, while sharing the colonizer, the cultural history, and being next-door neighbors may sometimes be a good enough reason to form a country together, India and Sri Lanka are contented to just be friends. Britain's stuck her imperial nose into more than a few countries, and you can... Britain's stuck her imperial nose into more than a few countries, and you can... Britain's stuck her imperial nose into more than a few countries, and you can... यार ये मेरे लिए बहुत नई बात थी कि पहले ना मैं बचपन में समझता था कि श्रीलंका हमारा अमसाया भी नहीं है इंडिया का बहुत दूर का कंट्री है क्रिकेट की वजह से जानते थे और आहिस्ता आहिस्ता श्रीलंका पर हमने वीडियोस बनाने शुरू की तो बहुत कुछ जाना इस मॉल के बारे में और पता चला ये एक ही मट्टी है हमारे भाई हैं और हम अकट्ठे हैं हमारा एक ही जुगराफ़ है और एक ही जख्म खाया है हम सब एक ही खाया क्योंकि ब्रिटिश जो भी थे ना ब्रिटिश राज ने उन्होंने एक ही स्ट्रेटजी स्ट्रेटजी अपनाई थी हमारे साउथ एशिया में और वही बता रहा हूँ � سلون سلون ریاست تھی نا یہ ریاست تھی اور پھر وہ بھی بریٹش کی ایک تھی کالونی تھی دوسری کالونی تھی پہلے انڈیا اور پاکستان میں تھی دوسری اور سلون اور سب سے بات جو وجہ تھی نا دیکھنے کی کہ یہ انڈیا کا حصہ کیوں نہیں بنا انڈیا چاہ رہا تھا یہ چاہ رہا تھا بنے انڈیا نے بہت ٹرائی کی تھی لیکن اس سری لنکا میں ہندو کم تھے اور منارٹی تھی اور اور جو ان کا بودھیزم سے تعلق رکھنے والے ہیں انہوں نے قربانییں بہت دی تھی انہوں نے 
देखा कितनी जंगे लड़ी जंगे लड़ी तीन चार जंगे और फिर ये उन्होंने साथ भी दिया मुस्लिम के साथ मिलकर ब्रिटिश का लेकिन जब कहत आया ना फूड की कमी फूड क्राइसिस क्राइसिस हुआ तो उसके बाद उन्होंने बगावत की और वो बगावत फिर ब्रिटिश भी कंट्रोल नहीं कर कंट्रोल क्योंकि ब्रिटिश उस टाइम खुद गिरने वाली गिरने वाली वो इधर तवज्जा देती तो उधर से गिर जाना थे इसलिए उसने तवज्जा छोड़ दी फिर देखो के सबसे इंटरेस्टिंग बात यह है कि जब इंडिया और पाकिस्तान बन गया तो एक साल बाद श्रीलंका जो था वो बना तो उसमें इंडिया ने बहुत कोशिश की कि श्रीलंका उनका हिस्सा बन जाए लेकिन श्रीलंका की नहीं खुद नहीं मानी हाँ। अभी इंडिया उनका दोस्त तो रह सकता है लेकिन उसको अपना हिस्सा नहीं, नहीं बना, बना सकता, सकता। इसी तरह बहुत जबरदस्त वीडियो थी पाकिस्तान और श्रीलंका के ताल्लुक भी बहुत बहुत अच्छे हैं भाई जैसे तो बहुत कुछ इस वीडियो ने हमें सिखाया सीखने को मिला आपको कैसा लगा लाजमी बताएं हमारे लिए बहुत ज्यादा इन्फॉर्मेटिव थी अपना ख्याल रखें चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें बाय बाय